This NBA Finals has made people go crazy. Go crazy. Because what's in stake in these NBA Finals is either one LeBron James win or one LeBron James loss. You got guys like Nick Wright saying that LeBron's last eight years is better than any other NBA career in history. And then on the other side of the spectrum, well, you got Skip Bayless. And that's the guy we will be covering in today's video because my goodness, my goodness. For every crazy LeBron stand, there is a crazy MJ stand to back it up. And Skip Bayless is the epitome of a MJ stand. We're going to be talking about three specific takes in this video, but before we get into that, what is good everybody? Welcome back to another video on the channel hosted by your boy B Souls, aka Ned Souls, aka Choji Souls, aka Russell from Up, aka y'all y'all already know the drill. You know what I'm saying? Y'all already know the drill. I hope everyone is having a good day. I hope everyone's having a good week. And today we are rocking the pink windscreen. No comment in specific that I want to shout out, but this is for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So let's go ahead and, you know, spread that awareness. I will put a link in the description for more resources about breast cancer awareness. Leave a like on this video. If you like videos like this, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, it takes two seconds and it helps me out a lot. Also check out the Let's Keep It A Book podcast. We're going to have Shady Triple Zero O Eight on the pod this week. A 2K legend in the community, man. So go ahead and check that out. Links will be in the description. But with that being said, man... <sighs> Let's talk about these takes. So the first take I want to look at, I honestly don't even want to look up the video, but this is the first take I want to look at. And in this tweet, he says that if LeBron James wins a championship this year, that it hurts his legacy. I cannot, let me reiterate that. This man said if LeBron James wins a championship, it hurts his legacy. You know, I get it. I get it right. A lot of you might be saying that me making videos like this is exactly what Skip Bayless and what Nick Wright and what all of these these networks want because it drives traffic to their shows. And I get that. I, I perfectly get that. But I'd much rather do that than let them get away with saying stuff like this and have no one saying anything about it. I, I'd rather do this than that because I, I can't. I can't. How can you go on national TV? and say that if a player wins a championship, wins a championship, that it hurts his legacy. What are we doing here, Skip? What are we doing here? You're one of the MJ people who holds rings to the highest standard. The highest standard. A man can do everything perfect in a season, but if he can't win a championship, that's not something MJ would do. MJ would have won a championship. Yeah, here we are. And before LeBron even won a championship, you're saying that it's going to hurt his legacy if he does? That's really what we're doing? That's really what we're doing. His reasoning for this is because the Miami Heat, this is a team that's weaker than any team Jordan has ever faced. This is the stupidest logical checkmate I have ever, ever heard come out of Skip Bayless's mouth. Because what you have in this situation is if LeBron wins a championship, it, it hurts his legacy. But if he doesn't, what is Skip going to say? What is Skip going to say? Because if LeBron James is lose, this is what he's going to say. LeBron James lost to a fifth-seeded Miami Heat team that he was heavily favored against and had injuries and had a 2-0 lead. Which, that scenario I get in itself because the Lakers were favored going into the series. After Game 1, Bam and Dragic go down. Bam comes back, but he's injured. Dragic hasn't come back yet going into game six. So I get that part if LeBron and the Lakers do lose. But what he said is if they don't, that it's still a negative. Like LeBron literally cannot do anything, anything to please this man. Okay, take take this into account, right? I'm recording this video after game five where LeBron James had 40 points, 12 rebounds, and seven assists, I believe, in, in, the, in the closeout game. Let's say that Danny Green didn't even take that last shot. Let's say LeBron James did what he was supposed to do, right? And he took that last shot like MJ and like Kobe would. And he made it. And LeBron made it. Skip Bayless the day after. Despite LeBron dropping 42, 12, and 7 on a closeout game, winning the game on a buzzer beater. Despite that, Skip Bayless would be on Undisputed the day after, saying that this ring hurts his legacy because he faced a weak team in the finals. 
How does that make sense? I have never gotten this logic of discrediting a player for doing what he's supposed to do. It's okay to put stuff in context, right? Like when we talk about LeBron's eight straight finals appearances, yes, it is valid to say that the Eastern Conference was a factor into LeBron James being able to make it to the finals that consistently. That's okay to say. And you can say that stat is not as impressive as it seems, right? You can say that this ring is not as impressive as LeBron's 2013 and 2012 ring. That's perfectly fine. But what you can't do is say that LeBron doing what he's supposed to do is a negative. And the same goes for MJ. You you can't say that LeBron losing a championship hurts his legacy. Because Skip, specifically you Skip, you didn't do this for Tim Duncan. You didn't. You didn't do that to Tim Duncan when he won a championship in 2007 versus that weak ass Cavs team. You didn't. You've been a notorious Spurs fan ever since, if anything. You didn't do that when Tim Duncan won a championship against an eighth seed, an eighth seed in 99 in a lockout year. You didn't do that for Tim Duncan. And the New York Knicks that year, to this day, are still the only eighth seed to ever make it to the NBA Finals. And you don't see Skip Bayless running around saying that those rings not only did not count, but hurt? Hurt Tim Duncan's legacy? You don't see him doing that. Did he do the same thing for Kevin Durant in 2018? Did he? If anything, all he did was criticize LeBron. I will never, ever, ever support a take that discredits someone for doing what they're supposed to do. I will never support a take that discredits winning, especially winning a championship, because that is literally what all of these players prepare for every single season that is what every team every player every franchise is working towards to maybe not in that season but in future seasons that is the thing that every single basketball player dreams of and once they do that it it, it doesn't matter it hurts they're you're a clown you're a clown but skip bayless extends this scope outside of the nba finals itself because he also said that this finals run by lebron james has been a cakewalk has been a cakewalk how is it lebron's fault that he's beating the people in front of him how <laughs> what again what do you want him to do people thought that the pelicans were going to be a better matchup for the lakers going into the first round but the pelicans were the one that underperformed so instead they got the portland trailblazers and going into the first round it was oh the Lakers don't have anyone that's going to guard Dame. Who's going to guard CJ? Oh my God, the Lakers. Uh, their offense is so bad and they're going up against the number one offense in the bubble. They're in trouble, yet they beat them in five. And then we get into the second round and it's not as bad, but it's a lot of the same thing. Who's guarding Westbrook? Who's guarding Harden? This is like the Blazers, but with better spacing and a, a more proven track record and a better superstar on that team. The Lakers are in trouble, man. The Lakers are in trouble and they beat them in five. And then we get into the Western Conference Finals and the Los Angeles Lakers face the Denver Nuggets. Again, how was it the Lakers fault that the Clippers blew a 3-1 lead? That the Clippers couldn't close out a series in five games when they could? How was that the Lakers fault? Because by that time, the Lakers were waiting because they're like, all right, we got the most anticipated matchup of the year. Lakers, Clippers, we're ready. We're here. We're just waiting for you. And the Clippers couldn't deliver, yet it's LeBron's fault. Yet yeah, it's a it's a stain on his legacy that they faced the Denver Nuggets. The Denver Nuggets that beat that supposedly better team after being down 3-1. That's like saying the 2007 Spurs run was a kickwalk in itself. Because that year, if you guys remember, a 67 Dallas Mavericks team lost in the first round to an 8 seed. Which meant that in the second round, the Utah Jazz had to face an 8 seed instead of a 67 win Dallas team. And that Utah team ended up going into the Western Conference Finals. So is Skip out here saying that that Spurs run was easy because they faced the Utah Jazz and not the Dallas Mavericks in the Western Conference Finals? No, he's not doing that. He's not doing that because that'd be very hypocritical. I'm just genuinely confused as to what LeBron has to do that will please Skip Bayless. Like I'm being like, take the goat, take Jordan out of this. What can LeBron do that will make Skip Bayless go, okay, that, that made his legacy better. Okay, let me put some respect on his name because it, he literally cannot do anything. 
he can. But then in another segment, they talk about KD ranking his top 10 MVP seasons in history. And in KD's top 10, he had two MJ seasons, two MJ MVP seasons that were 10 years apart. And what Skip Bayless said is that this is more conclusive evidence that LeBron's GOAT debate doesn't really mean anything and that it's you know, it's, it's a joke that we're even talking about this because MJ has two MVP seasons that are 10 years apart. And that's conclusive evidence, which, you know, I get that it's very impressive that Jordan has two MVP seasons that are 10 years apart, one in 88 and one in 98. That's very impressive. But he said that this is conclusive proof that LeBron's GOAT debate is just stupid. This fact alone. Skip, you do know in 2018, he finished second in MVP voting, right? nine years apart from his 09 MVP. He also finished second in MVP voting this year, which I understand he didn't exactly win the award and that's not exactly 10 years apart. And I understand upholding the, the consistency in terms of MVP voting, that's fine. But let's keep it a buck, let's keep it a bean. LeBron James in 2018 and LeBron this year has had a better season than some MVP seasons throughout history. And I get that this is not exactly 10 years and he didn't exactly win the MVP, but the statement still stands that there's a 10 year stretch in LeBron's career where he came in as the best player in the game, arguably, and came out as the best player in the game, arguably, as well again. Which I guess is the point, right? Of why Jordan having two MVP seasons that are 10 years apart is impressive. So even in this extremely arbitrary argument, there is still a case for LeBron James to be up there with Jordan along the same lines. And you know, I'm gonna give y'all an extra tick because this week, Stephen A said something really bad, <laughs> really bad. And what he said this week was that LeBron being in the GOAT discussion is really comedic because guys like Isaiah Thomas, the, the 80s Isaiah Thomas, ignore the fact that he's playing in the softest era in NBA history. And that fact itself kind of disqualifies him from being the GOAT. It was very physical. It was very volatile. It, it, it was an era made for the Kendrick Perkins of the world, for crying out loud. I'm talking about banging bodies, Jordan rules, people getting assaulted and only getting caught for a foul. And, and LeBron James at 6'9", 260 pounds, is playing in the softest era we have ever seen in NBA basketball. Number one, when you lead your argument with MJ played in the era built for guys like Kendrick Perkins, where he played in the era where Kendrick Perkins could succeed in, you're not really off to the hottest start in the world. But it's just crazy to me how there's this one side of the spectrum that doesn't believe MJ could play in today's era because he couldn't shoot. And then you have another side of the spectrum that doesn't think LeBron could play in the 80s and 90s because he's not physical enough because he flops um y'all do know this man is 6'8 right 6'8 260 like y'all have seen this guy right like we, we're watching the same guy right this isn't this isn't a twig this guy's a beast <laughs> this guy has a build similar to Car Malone right yeah he can't play in the 80s and 90s. You know, what's crazy is people will say those things, right? Like MJ can't play in today's era. LeBron can't play in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, turn around and say they're top five all-time players. All-time. All-time, but they can't succeed in a certain era? Interesting. Very interesting. And I get it right. There's more ticky-tacky fouls in today's NBA. There's more flopping. You know, the 80s, people were throwing themselves at MJ and just getting personal fouls. I, I get that part right. But if this game today is so soft and it's just, you know, the most physical players dominate in today's game, then why hasn't Giannis won a championship the last two years? Can't he just, like, overpower everyone and it's just no one can stop him? Which seems like the case sometimes, but... There's been teams like the Heat and the Raptors that have stopped such a, a athletic behemoth like Giannis Antetokounmpo. Why aren't guys like Joel Embiid and Russell Westbrook at the top of the top of the game if it's simply just about being athletic and being big? Yet guys like James Harden and Steph Curry are, who aren't these athletic freaks, but their skill is so amazing. This is an era that's truly found the value in shooting. 
and there have been so many advancements in the game the last five years and that presents new challenges for these players just because there's more ticky tacky fouls does not mean that this is an easy era to play in and lebron didn't just start dominating like three years ago lebron has been dominating this game since 07 06 are you saying that that era <laughs> was weak because lebron james was winning mvps and making it to the finals back then with scrubs <laughs> with scrubs so are, are you saying that as soon as he went to miami the league just got softer um hope y'all enjoyed this video leave a like on it if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you haven't already nick right you're next bro but um we out peace